Hey guys, Magnetical here. My friends, they call me Mag, and if you want to be a friend, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post a video. And welcome to my 2022 best OBS settings for streaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second. We're not going to do too much talking in the beginning. We're just going to jump right into it. I will let you guys know, uh, first of all, that there are times where we're going to stop by and talk about a certain setting. That way you can tweak it to whatever it is that you want it to be just to fit your own uh, personal setup. Number two, uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming out and watching this video. Hopefully you leave a like. Let's get into it. We're going to go ahead and hit the file here and we're going to go ahead and go to the settings and this should open up all our options here that we're going to be messing around with. So luckily in general, we don't really mess around with it a lot unless you want to change your theme. Other than that, leave this one alone. Uh, the next one is going to be the stream uh, and it's going to look for your stream key here. So depending on the service that you're going to be working with, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, uh, you can go ahead and hit connect account. Uh, and basically you just got to type in your name and password and it'll connect your Twitch account or whatever other streaming service you're trying to connect to. It'll retrieve the stream key. We should be done with this screen here. So once you're done with that, let's head over to the output folder. In the output tab, we're going to go ahead and change the mode from simple to advanced, and we're going to leave the audio track at one. And we're not going to check anything with the Twitch VOD track here unless we do some audio stuff, which we'll talk about later. In the encoder, though, if you guys are using Horizon, I definitely recommend this X264 uh, codec or encoder, I should say. But if you guys have an NVIDIA card, go ahead and do this NVIDIA NVEC H.264 new. And that is the one I've been using for a while. It works great, especially this new version, which barely hits your system. It is crazy how well this works. So we're going to keep this at new for streaming. And the next thing we're going to go to is we're going to leave this rescale uh, completely unchecked. The rate control here for uh, Twitch or whatever it is that you're streaming in. I typically like to keep this at a constant bit rate. Uh, None of these other ones have been recommended, especially not by the Twitch website, which we'll get to in a second. So constant bitrate is definitely the one to go to. And then your bitrate by default is set to 2500, which is perfectly fine, especially if you're doing like uh, 720p uh, streaming, 720p at 60 frames per second even, but definitely for the lower end. So what I'd like to do, and this is totally dependent on your internet at this point. So this is kind of like depending on your system, depending on your internet, how much your bitrate can be. So what the first thing I like to do, and I already have it ready, I like to go to the speedtest.com by Ookla. And once you get your results, uh, depending on this right here, as you can see, my download speed uh, is pretty decent. Uh, I do have some stuff like Netflix and stuff going on in the background and some downloads. My upload speed is pretty much high. I do have the, um, the fiber internet here. So this is kind of something to look at here, depending. Uh, so once you have your results, take a note of those and let's go ahead and go to Google or whatever search you want to go to and just do Twitch bitrate. Twitch themselves have a website, a very helpful website on help on help.twitch.tv. And basically you can just kind of go to that site and scroll down a little bit. I'm going to make this full screen so you guys can see it. But from there, they give you kind of a guide on depending on your internet, what you should be using. So when it comes to um, you know, either the Ryzen or the Nvidia, if you guys have some pretty great internet, um, basically what I would do is just kind of start from the top. If your results were a little bit lower or not as favorable, I would definitely start maybe with, uh, the 720p at 60 frames per second area and kind of work up from there to see what your, what your results are. And the best way to do that is just to do a test stream. Uh, don't put a game in there. Just do a test stream. Just play something that has a lot of movement or a lot of foliage, for example, maybe like Far Cry or maybe even like a Call of Duty game or like a first person shooter with a lot of movement. If you guys can go ahead and uh, pop one of those off while you're streaming for a test, you can see if there's any stuttering, maybe a lot of pixels, anything that might be keeping you from running this at 1080p at 60 frames per second. So as you can see, the recommended bit right here is 6000 kilobytes per second at CBR. That is for 60 frames per second. It gives us some other settings here to mess with. If you are experiencing some stuttering, I would definitely go for a 900p uh, stream, which I've seen a lot of, but definitely I, I would say a overwhelming amount. It's still 720p at 60 frames per second. And as you can see, the bit rate for this is 4,500 kilobytes per second. So that is perfectly fine. I still see it all the time. It is very, very prominent still in, in Twitch. So again, we can go for the 45 depending on your needs and your internet. But since my, my internet is pretty decent, I usually go for the 6,000 here. Sometimes I'll lower it, but for now we'll just keep it just for the sake of the video. Uh, from the settings from the Twitch website, 
our key interval is going to be two. And then our quality here is going to be, uh, just keep it at that. You can go for max quality, but I'll definitely uh, bog down your system a little bit. If it is, and you're seeing a little error at the bottom here that says like encoder overload at the bottom, that means you got to turn down some of these settings. That, that means your system's not handling it. So you got to worry about your system be, being able to, ha to handle the stream, but you also have to worry about uh, your internet and then Twitch and stuttering. So there's a lot of a lot of issues a lot of things going on at the same time that you kind of have to worry about and this is why hopefully this will ease up that process and i can explain it to you in a way that you guys can you know understand again this is about the viewer you want to create a pleasing viewing experience so make sure you know you don't ego choose 60 or 6 000 only because you know i'm doing it if you see some stuttering there's nothing wrong with going with 45. so now that we have these settings here let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and set that up we're going to go ahead and hit apply uh, we're going to skip the recording. Next thing we're going to go to here is going to be the track. Uh, since we're only doing one track for streaming, as you can see, it's track number one. We're going to go to track number one and just put that at 320 kilobytes per second for some great quality sound there. Apply. And we're going to head over to the audio tab here. I'm going to move this up a little bit here, but we got 48 kil uh, or 48 for the sample rate. And typically I like to keep it at that depending on your system. I'm not going to mess around with any of these other things. Again, if you guys want a setup or a video on audio for setting up your desktop audio, your microphone, and even messing around with some of the equalizers here. So you guys can have your, you know, your voice, uh, just go over the, the game and the game doesn't overpower it. Just a great little, you know, tutorial on how to make your voice and audio and maybe even discord kind of balance each other out. If you guys like that kind of, kind of stuff, let me know so I can start working on the video for you guys. Other than that, let's go ahead and move on. The next tab we're going to go to is going to be video. And this is definitely one of the more important ones out there. As you can see, this is a base cans resolution it, or canvas resolution. I'm sorry. It's going to be at 1080p. And what that means is, is, is this whole black area right here. This canvas is going to be at 1080p. So if you were to just input any kind of like video source, that's 1080p, let's say a video game, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to record, typically it should by default, uh, already cover this whole black area right here. So it's going to look nice. It's going to look pretty, but there's going to be a couple of issues with these settings. One by default, it's set for the output to be 720 P. So if you start, if you keep this canvas, that means your canvas is going to look great. But when you're outputting to, to Twitch or YouTube or, um, Facebook, whatever it is you're outputting to, it's going to be in 720 P. So what that means is that you're outputting something that's lower than what you're you're generally expecting, which is totally fine. If you guys are going for a 720, uh, 720p stream, there is nothing wrong with that. Again, no issues with that whatsoever, depending on your encoder errors or whatever is going on. But for this video, we're gonna go ahead and change this to 1080p. So we have a canvas at 1080p, we're outputting 1080p signals, which is great. The downscaler is by default at by cubic, which is great, but we're gonna go ahead and go for this 36 samples. Again, if you start getting any of the encoder uh, overloading, this is where you start turning things down here as well, just depending on your system. But for our purposes here, since this is a tutorial for streaming at, at 60 frames per second, we're gonna go from 30 all the way down to 60. Keep your eye on the encoder. Again, run those streaming tests and that way you can change and tweak uh, depending on your needs. Let's go ahead and go to the hotkeys. I usually don't mess around with these very often since I use a stream deck mainly, but if you guys needed a video on this, let me know. Sometimes I use them, not very, uh, not very often, but I'm more than happy to do that for you guys. But uh, the last thing we're gonna go to is the advanced tab. And just like my video where I did uh, the best settings for you know 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second video recording, we are not gonna change anything in this area. The renderer should be at direct 3D 11. The color format should be at NV12 and the color space should be at 709. Now, if you're streaming something that's an SD video, uh, kind of like, I don't know, like older consoles, 601 might be okay, but I typically keep it at 709 and that has worked for me no matter, uh, pretty much in every occasion. But this one right here, this color space is at partial. Now, if you were to bring down the menu, there should be another option that says full. A lot of people they they automatically just go full they think it's better they think it's more and the colors do pop but the bad thing about color range being full is that it blackens those darks so much that in a lot of cases you don't even know what's going on anymore with the image so what i like to do is keep this as partial as partial again uh don't ego pick any of this if it doesn't apply to you definitely not the color range only because if you're playing like a scary game like let's say bioshock or outlast 
Uh, I even had issues with uh, Death Stranding, to be honest with you, uh, with full. Some of the areas are so dark that you don't even know what's going on. And there's, it's just like it's just pitch black. There's just like little movement here and there. But the viewer cannot know or doesn't know what is happening. They they lose. They, they get sucked out of the experience, which is the last thing that we want them to do. So keep it at partial. Make sure they're able to see what's going on only because that creates a more valuable and definitely a more uh, presentable viewing experience for, for the viewer. So now that we have all of this together, we're not going to mess with anything else. Hit apply. Hit OK. And we should be good to go. So now you have some great settings in the comments below. Let me know if you enjoyed these settings or if you have any questions. We can even talk about little small tweaks that we can do for you guys so we can make your experience a little bit better. So again, thank you so much for coming by and watching uh, this tutorial for the year of 2022. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys on the next one.